If you've been in crypto for more than a few days, you probably have your fair share of mistakes and regrets by now. I must admit that I often find myself wondering where I'd be today if I'd bought that dip, sold that peak, or continued to hodl on against all odds. There are so many things I wish I knew before getting into crypto, and in retrospect, I had to learn all those things the hard way. The good news is that you don't have to, because today I'm going to tell you everything I wish I knew before I got into crypto, and how you can use this knowledge to conquer the crypto market. I hate to hit the brakes, but going on without a disclaimer would be a big mistake. If you think I'm a financial advisor, I'm afraid I ain't. I'm only licensed to entertain and educate. Please contact a financial advisor if money is what you're trying to make. If this is your first time in this place, my name is Guy and I hate crypto clickbait. Although I occasionally partake, I do my best to make crypto content that's truly great. Coins, tokens, news, and reviews explained in ways that make sense if you're a blank slate. If this sounds as good as cake, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell to make sure my next video finds its way to your plate. I have left a few timestamps below that you can use to skip around if you're running late. If you find this information helpful, watching until the end is the best way to reciprocate. As far as the intro goes, that's all I have to say. So let me tell you about the things I wish I knew back in the day. The first thing I wish I knew before getting into crypto is that there is much more to the crypto market than Bitcoin and the other coins and tokens in the top 10. Once upon a time, the classic crypto combo was Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, and these were basically the only cryptocurrencies I and many other crypto noobs knew and held. It wasn't until much later that I started to understand, appreciate, and eventually hold other amazing altcoins like Cardano and Chainlink. By the time I got around to it, though, these cryptocurrencies had already seen most of their gains in percentage terms. Now, I'm not saying that ADA and LINK have their best days behind them, quite the contrary. Crypto is quite literally on the cutting edge of tech and finance, and even established cryptos like ADA and LINK will likely deliver mind-melting gains as they continue to develop. However, the fact of the matter is that the cryptocurrencies that will give you the highest return on investment are the ones that are on the cutting edge of the cutting edge, the bleeding edge, if you will. Now, these altcoins are admittedly hard to find because it partially involves predicting what the next big thing will be, whether it's another metaverse token or an NFT collection. While there are always a few moon boys who get lucky, consistently calling out up and coming cryptos requires years of specific experience that very few people have. And even then, there's no guarantee. The second thing I wish I knew before getting into crypto is how to balance risk versus reward. Now, if I had a pound for every time I invested too much into the crypto market, I probably would have invested a lot more pounds into the crypto market, if you catch my drift. Besides the fact that risk and reward can be hard to measure for many cryptocurrencies, there's no hard and fast rule for how much risk and reward you should take on. Volatility is part of life in cryptocurrency, and everyone knows it, but it's very different when you experience it firsthand. As I mentioned in my video about the biggest mistakes you could make in the crypto market, your risk tolerance fundamentally depends on your unique situation and who you are as a person. Even though I've seen many dips over the years, I still get nervous every time I see a double-digit drop in my favorite coins and tokens. It took me years to realize that I could curb this anxiety by reducing my crypto allocation and diversifying my portfolio into other assets. Before I figured this out, I was panic selling every dip. Risk management is another critical skill we were never taught in school, but I reckon it's something you need to figure out on your own, since it depends on your personal tolerance. Pro tip, if your crypto portfolio constantly stresses you out, you've probably taken on too much risk. If you know this is the case, but insist on pressing on regardless, well, I recommend watching my video about how to manage crypto-related stress. I'll leave a link for it in the description for you folks. The third thing I wish I knew before getting into crypto was just how important the technology is when it comes to price action and potential. All I really needed to know was the blockchain trilemma. Now, the blockchain trilemma basically states that a cryptocurrency can be either scalable, 
i.e. fast, and decentralized, but not secure, decentralized and secure, but not fast, or fast and secure, but not decentralized. The blockchain trilemma was famously defined by Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin a few years back, and I remember hearing about it shortly after Vitalik defined it. The thing is that I never applied it to my crypto analysis, and even now I have to remind myself to check and see which corner of the triangle a crypto project is cutting when I'm doing research. Take Solana, for example. It's fast and decentralized, and that means it's necessarily less secure. Lo and behold, Solana's blockchain has gone down twice since it launched last year. Now, I say this as someone who holds Sol, and that's because I know that no crypto project is perfect, and I've yet to come across any cryptocurrency that has convincingly solved the blockchain trilemma. When I pop open the hood on every smart contract cryptocurrency that claims to have solved the blockchain trilemma, I always find centralization, security flaws, or fake transaction speeds. This brings me to the fourth thing I wish I knew before I got into crypto, and that's being aware of just how convincing crypto scams can be and how big they can get. Crypto scams are everywhere these days. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, and even some airports. The most convincing scams I've seen are on Telegram, though, where fake profiles will create fake channels or reach out to you whenever you ask for help in a crypto group. My Telegram channel was finally verified a few months back, but just in case, I'll remind everyone that I do not tell you which altcoins to buy, I do not ask for money, and I don't give any kinds of trading signals. If you're part of a Coin Bureau Telegram that offers any of the above, know that they are not affiliated with the Coin Bureau, regardless of how convincing they might look. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but to say that these scams are the tip of the iceberg is an insult to icebergs. There are a few extremely popular crypto projects that are extremely shady, and I'm not going to name names for obvious reasons. It's always scary to see how many people have drunk the Kool-Aid of these crypto projects, and even scarier to think how many of these Kool-Aid drinkers are being paid to get more drinkers on board. Now, make no mistake, quality crypto projects don't need any marketing, and they certainly don't need an angry mob which attacks anyone who asks a critical question or points out an inconsistency. There's a very special word for these kinds of cryptocurrency, and if you take a look at that link in the top right, you'll know which word that is. The fifth thing I wish I knew before I got into crypto relates to the fourth, and that's how to do research, or more specifically, which information to trust. When I first started researching cryptocurrencies, I used to rely on three third parties. CoinMarketCap, Binance Research, Misari, and occasionally a few news articles from Decrypt or Coindesk. Now, generally speaking, these guys get it right. And though they definitely have their biases, when they really don't like a crypto project, they tend to just not cover it at all. And I suppose we have that in common. The bigger problem with using third-party sources is that it's kind of like a game of telephone. Even if the information was correct at the outset, it gets distorted at every step of the process. There have been many cases where what was said in a crypto project's documentation was completely different from what an authoritative source said, and sometimes it's hard to know which version of the story is the right one. Now, a great example here is Grayscale's Decentraland report from March, which notes that small amounts of mana are burned when buying items on the Decentraland marketplace even though this MANA marketplace burn was removed in January as per Decentraland's blog post. Note that Grayscale has a Decentraland trust with more than $90 million worth of MANA in it. Now, inconsistencies like these are why I always drill down to the source, and I'll leave a video about how I do my research now in the description if you're interested. The sixth thing I wish I knew before I got into crypto is where the best place is to go to buy and sell crypto. Similarly to going all in on a single cryptocurrency, people have a tendency to just stick with whatever crypto exchange or app they first started using, and usually it was suggested to them by a friend, family member, or worse, a YouTuber. Now, this was the case for me, and I've lost count of how much money I've lost in fees. Luckily, I always kept my crypto in my own personal wallet, and never on any exchanges, so I didn't lose all my crypto 
like one of the Coin Bureau team members did when they first started investing in it. To be fair, there are quite a few shady exchanges in the crypto space, and giving sensitive information such as your passport to a centralized entity is already risky enough as it is. To my mind, the ideal cryptocurrency exchange is secure, transparent, offers lots of trading pairs, and works within the bounds of the law. There are actually a few cryptocurrency exchanges that meet these criteria, and you guys can find out which ones by hitting that link in the top right. I'll just quickly add that the perfect cryptocurrency exchange varies from person to person. It could be the UI, the breadth of token support, or the availability of effective on and off ramps. I personally prefer to have an account at multiple exchanges in case something happens to one of them. You know, like those outages that are always happening when prices are pumping or dumping. <sighs> Anyways, moving on. The seventh thing I wish I knew before I got into crypto is basic economics. It took me longer than it should have done to realize that the long-term potential of a cryptocurrency is ultimately determined by the same two things as every other asset, supply and demand. On the supply side, you have stuff like coin or token unlock schedules from early investors and new issuance from mining or staking rewards. On the demand side, you have stuff like current and future use cases and utility. If a cryptocurrency is going to succeed in the long term, there must be one or more demand drivers creating enough buying pressure to outweigh the sell pressure coming from sources of supply. Some cryptocurrencies like Ethereum have the best of both worlds. ETH is used to pay for all transaction fees, which creates demand, and a portion of these fees are burned, which reduces supply. Now, other cryptocurrencies have the worst of both worlds. No clear utility, which drives demand, and a constantly growing supply from aggressive vesting schedules or staking rewards. Understanding supply and demand is also required to properly project how much a cryptocurrency could pump. As I've mentioned many, many times before, a low price doesn't mean anything. What's important is the market cap of that coin or token. The smaller the market cap, the greater the potential, regardless of the sticker price. That's because it takes less money to move it up or down. So keep that second point in mind before you FOMO into a microcap. The eighth thing I wish I knew before I got into crypto is some basic technical analysis. Now, I initially shied away from technical analysis for the same reason almost everyone else does. It just seemed so, well, technical. Now, technical analysis can also seem very arbitrary, but if you've seen my first technical analysis tutorial, you'll know this is not the case whatsoever. The patterns that traders use today have been around for hundreds of years, and almost every indicator is derived from the average price and or trading volume over a certain amount of time. More importantly, the price action itself is just a reflection of human emotions like fear and greed, which tend to swing from one extreme to the other over time. This is why technical analysis has worked for hundreds of years in every liquid asset market. And even though it can't be used to predict the price every time, it often gives you a much clearer view of how investors are actually feeling and how they are likely to act next. As such, being familiar with the basics of technical analysis can go a long way to helping you figure out when the best time is to buy and when the best time is to sell, something that I wish I knew a lot sooner in my crypto career. Then again, if I'd known about technical analysis before getting into crypto, I might have ended up becoming a day trader and getting even more wrecked than I did because of stuff like Wyckoff patterns. More about that in the description. The ninth thing I wish I knew before I got into crypto is the value of early adoption. I'll start by saying that unless you're watching this video in 2030, you're still very early to cryptocurrency. There are currently around 300 million crypto holders worldwide, which is fewer than 5% of the global population. Never mind the fact that being a crypto holder doesn't automatically make someone a crypto user. If you'd rather sit on Bitcoin and a few big altcoins while cryptocurrency adoption accelerates, well, more power to you. Just know that being an early adopter of new projects within an early ecosystem has its benefits. In addition to getting in early on promising altcoins, 
There's learning valuable skills in an emerging industry, finding a few dApps that improve your daily life, and exposing yourself to new opportunities, especially if you're active in crypto communities. Case in point, Harmony is paying hundreds of dollars per hour to governors in its decentralized autonomous organizations. Now, obviously, this is an opportunity that's out of your reach if you have no idea what Harmony is and have no experience being part of a DAO. This is why it is absolutely critical that you not only learn about new cryptocurrencies, but also try out their dApps and protocols to see how they work and whether they offer something you're interested in. With some luck, you'll find yourself on the receiving end of a lucrative airdrop. And I saw a great video the other day about how you can find these lucrative gems top right for your viewing pleasure. Now, the 10th thing I wish I knew before I got into crypto is that investing isn't the only way to make money in this industry. There are lending protocols that give you yield on your cryptocurrencies while you hodl. There are savings protocols that let you earn stable interest on stablecoins. There are DEXs where you can provide liquidity and earn a cut of all transaction fees. There are smart contract cryptocurrencies that let you delegate your coins to earn staking rewards. There are crypto projects like Axie Infinity where you can play to earn. And last but not least, there's no shortage of business opportunities. When I first started investing in crypto, I was a wage slave. Were it not for my friend who asked me to join the Coin Bureau as a writer way back when it was just a website, I might well still be a wage slave. But I have many friends who quit their jobs to go full-time into crypto, and none of them have regretted it, at least as far as I know. This might have something to do with the fact that crypto jobs can pay up to twice as much as their no-coin equivalents. The crypto industry is also very small, and that means there is a lot of upward mobility once you get your foot in the door, especially if you manage to make a name for yourself. That said, don't expect to become a millionaire overnight if you join a crypto company. It takes a lot of work and there is a lot of competition. And working in cryptocurrency is certainly not for everyone. But if you think you have what it takes, be sure to check out my video about how to get a crypto job. It's in the usual spot. And there you have it, folks. The 10 things I wish I knew before I got into crypto. But now I'm keen to hear from you. So what do you wish you knew before you got into this crazy world? Drop me a comment down below. And if you liked what you saw today, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ping that notification bell before you go. If you're looking for more from the Bureau, you can find it on Coin Bureau Clips, which features bloopers and behind the scenes. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for hot takes and memes, and join my free Telegram channel for daily crypto updates that will keep you up to speed. If your portfolio needs a new coat of paint, my weekly newsletter is what you need. It's where you can see the coins and tokens I hold and how my holdings change from week to week. If you're looking to pick up a crypto-themed Christmas gift for your man or miss, the Coin Bureau merch store is stocked with hoodies, shirts, and tees that are as comfortable as bliss. While supplies last, so get them fast. Now, you can find my second channel, socials, Telegram, merch store, and more using the links in the description down below. Thank you so much for sticking around. Take care, stay warm, and remember to call your mum. This is Guy saying goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.